I want to show you how to make some doors for your small cabinets. And first I want to show you some examples. So this small cabinet has solid wood doors. They're, they're cherry and a single turn latch closes both of them. Being solid wood, they expand and contract, and so you have to be careful in the sizing of the door that you don't make it too tight to where it will bind. Now this is a floating panel door, and this wood is walnut set in a frame of hickory, and the walnut is able to expand and contract. The hickory frame holds everything flat. Um, a frame and panel door is a great opportunity to do some interesting design work. So on this one I've cut an angle here and um, on both sides it creates kind of a cathedral effect. I'll show you another example that has, uh, has it going the other way and it also works and makes an interesting effect. This small cabinet, surprisingly it's related to the one I just showed you but I will talk about the joints later. These are tongue and groove pieces and the outer tongue and groove pieces are held firmly in place and the inner tongue and groove pieces are allowed to expand and contract to make sure the door stays flat. Now this is another variation. This is basically a frame and panel door except the panel is glass and because it's glass I have to allow for the glass to be removed in case the glass were to be damaged or break and so it's just it's all held in place with these little nailing strips which are nailed in place after the door is finished. All three of these cabinets have doors made with bridle joints. I'll show you how to make them now. The bridle joint is a very useful joint, particularly for small cabinets. If you can imagine trying to fit a biscuit in there, you see that there's not enough room for it. If you're trying to put dowels in there, it's often difficult to get them in perfect alignment and to make the door stay flat. With bridle joints, you get a very strong joint that will last many years. So this is a bridle joint door that's incomplete. So you can see how it, it fits together. This part is called the bridle. And you can call this the tenon, just as you would a mortise and tenon joint. Or you could call it the bit, because this gets its name from the bridle that a horse would wear. One of the things I like about a bridle joint door is it lays perfectly flat. Another beautiful thing about it is it is all done on the table saw. No other tools required. The styles and rails are cut to fit the cabinet, so I wait until the cabinet is trial assembled to be able to take my measurements. You notice that the center style and the outer styles are different dimensions. That's a design feature. To eliminate extra steps in setup of the saw, I cut both tenons the same length, and then after the door is assembled, I can trim this one edge. To make a bridle joint, you need a tenoning jig. Now you can either make one yourself out of a piece of scrap plywood or buy some plywood and spend just a few dollars on it. The shop made jig slides along the fence and the position of the cut is controlled by the position of the fence. So to widen your cut, you just simply move the fence one way or the other. Whenever you're making bridle joints, it's good to have some scrap stock left over from cutting your styles and rails so you have something to use to test your cut. For about $70 or under $100, you can buy a, a professional model tenoning jig and it simply slides in the miter gauge slot. And this is what I use to cut most of my bridle joints. This is a test cut, so I'm going to take my tape measure, I'm going to measure the depth, and just double check everything after I've made this first cut. Good. I'll also double check that, okay? So now I put my stock in with the face side out. So for me to look down here and see that I have my marking on there, it reminds me that I'm doing it right. On a frame and panel door, face side in or face side out is not that important, but it is important that you, important that you be consistent. 
So if you start with the face side in, you want to make sure that every single part is done the same way. So now I'm going to widen my cut. by about one saw width. So now I've cut all the bridles in the styles. Next, I'll put the sled on the table saw so I can cut the faces and the backside of the rails. I'm going to make a trial cut for trimming the shoulders. I don't have to cut full depth at this. I just really want to make sure that it's not too deep and that my measurement here is correct. By cutting all my tenons the same length, I've eliminated several steps. Now this is one of them. I didn't have to cut this at two different lengths. So I put a style back in place to help me with the setup for the next step. And you can see I'm kind of dialing this in to where that tooth lines up with the previous cut and lock it down. Now I can take my practice piece and I can do a test cut and I have to set the blade height at one and one half inches and then I may fine tune it a little bit if I'm not quite quite if I'm not quite right. First what I see for my test cut is that I can go a very slight amount deeper or I can come back with a chisel and clean that up. The second thing I'll observe with my test cut is whether or not these line up perfectly, this inside surface and that inside surface. And I can see that there's a very slight difference in height. So you can see I have to change it just very slightly. So it looks good. So if I'm satisfied with how high the blade is, now I can start cutting the back sides of each of these. So now I'll go back to my style and use it to help with my setup again. Maybe I'll just go ahead and try it right on the money. But I'll do it right on the money first on my test piece. And if I have a good fit, which I don't, I shouldn't have to force it together. It should be loose, it should go together tight enough so that gravity will hold it but not so tight that I have to apply force. So I'm going to put this back in and dial it out just a little bit and try again. Not bad. So this is your basic bridle joint. There's still a couple steps that need to happen to it. I have to make a cut, cut away part of this so it'll nest all the way down in. And also I'll make a cut across the face of it here to allow for the floating panel to fit. So I have this piece clamped to the sled. I have the stop block set up. And this cut between here and here is the depth of my slots on the bridle joints. For safety reasons, I'm clamping this firmly to the sled so I don't have to be holding it with my hands.
And now I'll lower the blade height to just cut away this little tenon. Now we're gonna make my first cut out away from it so that I don't trap a piece in there. So Now I want to see how my door goes together. Okay, so I've got doors right and left. Seven eighths of an inch. I'm going to take and I'm going to mark like that. So I want to take this other piece that goes on the left and I want to mark it exactly the same. Then I'll bandsaw these. And I'll sand the edges flat on the sander, and that will give me my interesting effect. I have these bookmatched maple panels that I'm going to use on the doors of the cabinet. They should be real pretty. They're plain to thickness. And that thickness will fit right inside that bridle joint groove that I've already cut. So I can use this piece as a guide for my setup. I'll actually use my earlier test piece. And I can see where that saw blade is going to hit. So I want to also double check the height of the cut. The height of the cut needs to be a quarter inch or less so that when I make the cut, it doesn't cut into the tenon. So I can do the same thing to each of these dials and rails, but I'm going to use these pieces to show you how to do it on the router table. So now I want to move the blade over just enough to get a perfect fit on the thickness of the panel. Use a block to index it so I can observe exactly how far I've moved the fence. That looked pretty good. If I want to use a router table to cut the dado on the inside edges of the cabinet styles and rails, I can use the same story stick that I used for testing my cut earlier. Now this router bit has a bushing on it that brings it out to a one quarter inch depth of cut. So with that pilot it will cut one quarter inch in from the edge. I'm going to bring the fence in over the cutter so that it'll have this edge here to carry the weight of the work piece. So now I'll raise the height of the cut to match the thickness of my panel. So I'm doing a little trial assembly of all my parts. And what I want to do is then lay these down over the panel so I can see how they're going to look and make some decisions. What's going to be the most beautiful? So in cutting this panel to size, my first thing is just going to simply be to make a jointer cut down that side and a jointer cut down that side and then rip them to their final width. So that needs to be about four inches wide. I want to look at these carefully and see that they line up right. And I'll look for little points of interest in the wood 
like there's a little ripple right there and a little ripple right there. So if I line those two, they tend to look like they really belong together. Same here and same up here. So when I get this lined up the way I want it by sliding one way or the other, then I'll mark down here at the end where I'm going to square the end. So if I get that assembled like that, and I take this and line it up where it needs to be, and now I want to mark a line one fourth inch to go into that. Come back here and mark again. So I'll make a bandsaw cut right along that line. This panel will fit into this style and rail assembly.